All right, we have this from Truth Social. Donald Trump has posted saying, the corrupt Biden administration has informed my attorneys that I have been indicted seemingly over the boxes hoax. Even though Joe Biden has 1,850 boxes at the University of Delaware, additional boxes in Chinatown, D.C., with even more boxes at the University of Pennsylvania and documents strewn all over his garage floor where he parks his Corvette and which is, quote, secured by only a garage door that is paper thin and open much of the time. He continues, I have been summoned to appear at the federal courthouse in Miami on Tuesday at 3 p.m. I never thought it would. Uh, I never thought it possible that such a thing could happen to a former president of the United States who received far more votes than any sitting president in the history of our country and is currently leading by far all candidates, both Democrat and Republican, in polls of the 2024 presidential election. I am an innocent man. This is indeed a dark day for the United States of America. We are a country in serious and rapid decline, but together we will make America great again. Elon Musk has chimed in responding to ALX posting this saying there does seem to be far higher interest in pursuing Trump compared to other people in politics. Very important that the justice, justice system rebut what appears to be differential enforcement or they will lose public trust. Elon, I appreciate the sentiment, but you are a couple years too late. It's happening. The federal indictment by the Biden DOJ is direct election interference. It is subversion of the United States election. It's just, I don't even know what to say other than, yo, look, man, I don't see how this country remains on this path. I don't see how the United States stands and continues to function when you've got the sitting president filing an indictment against his chief rival. And the same day, and we'll get to it in a minute, where Evidence is coming out proving Biden is corrupt mm -hmm. and was bri and was taking bribes. Well, it, it not just Biden, right? The entire political establishment has been for a very long time, and we've seen selective prosecutions occur. I think in the case of Dinesh D'Souza, it was very obvious that his prosecution was politically motivated, though he did commit a crime. It's one that typically uh, is not pursued in one which almost never carries the penalty, which he received, which was jail time. So this has been happening for a while here, and now they're just moving on to higher and higher profile people, like the former president of the United States and one of the number one polling people who's currently running in 2024. When Donald Trump said that he... What if he was in charge of the justice system in the United States, Hillary Clinton would be in jail. In an absolutely brilliant moment, which was hilarious and very rhetorically effective, the response from the media was, this sets a very dangerous precedent. Now, I think it's a little bit different, right? Because there are things that Hillary Clinton has done that we can point to and say, almost anyone else who had done these things would at the very least be investigated and very likely be prosecuted. Now, with Donald Trump, what they're trying to nail him for is having classified documents even though he as president had the authority to declassify them and did so so there's absolutely nothing here but they want to lock him up because he is setting an example for the american people and so now they need to make one out of him i sure i sure think that trump uh i bet trump regrets not prosecuting hillary clinton hmm. he i was like we're gonna lock her up and then as soon as he got elected, he's like, we're not going to do it. And now he's probably really upset that he didn't because they're coming after him with, with everything they've got. Well, he had a weak uh, uh, Justice Department from the beginning. Remember, Sessions yep. mm -hmm. gave in right away. It must have been a month into the administration. Yep. They Pathetic. went after Flynn. He VP fired Flynn. And we sat through four, five, four years of this Russia hoax every day. CNN, MSNBC, the whole mainstream Russia hoax. And there was nothing there. But Jeff Session appointed a special prosecutor right off the bat, and we have to live with that. You think that you think Merrick Garland will appoint a special prosecutor to look into Joe Biden's five million? Hmm. Never. We have two two uh, tiers of justice in this country. I thought it was interesting that they released this uh, on a Thursday at 7.40 p.m. right before we go live. Like, I'm not saying we're the center <laughs> of the universe, but do they want to make a public spectacle? Is this more well, about— Trump announced it. That's true. That's true. I was watching Tim Cast and I thought, it? quite frankly, they should break it. I would love that. Um, Let's see if we can get him on the phone. If, if they, oh, that'd be amazing. If they, if they want to make a public spectacle, is it is the goal here to humiliate Donald Trump or is the goal to put him in jail? Both. I, yes. I think context here is very important. So Donald Trump will be the first former president who's ever been indicted on something. This is the second time he's going to be indicted. So first in New York City, the Manhattan District Attorney was working with the grand jury to indict Trump for these so-called hush money payments to Stormy Daniel. Now we have uh, the Department of Ju Justice um, looking into these classified documents, the second indictment that's ever come up. Also, there's, I think, potentially a third indictment that's going to come from Georgia <laughs> yep. um, surrounding efforts to potentially uh, with what he said 
with um, They're saying election looking looking for votes yeah. uh, with that whole scandal. There's also another civil suit against the Trump organization about lying to lenders and insurers about his assets. But what's key here is that this is the first former president to be indicted. And I know there's a myth that nobody's above the law, but guess what? The president and former presidents actually are above the law. There's a lot of things that people could have thought of to indict former presidents on. We spoke about it earlier. Barack Obama droned American citizens overseas, whether or not that you, some people think that's justified. That's something that could potentially be indicted on. People call George Bush that say that he started an illegal war in Iraq. But no, the first indictment of a former president that we're seeing is initially for hush money payments. And now this declassified document. Eli, you're going you're gonna to start making me support this. I mean, if this opens the door for us to go after former presidents and prosecute them, man, I hope he gets yeah. off and he should, if, but let's do it. Well, what's they, it say? If this is the first former president no, ex agreed. I agree. I'm, I'm giving you a hard time. If they indicted Trump over the commando raids in Yemen mm -hmm. that resulted in the death, of, allegedly, the death of an American girl, mm -hmm. Abdurrahman al Alaki's sister, that one is more conjecture than Abdurrahman al Alaki, but should be investigated. If they indicted him for that, said an investigation found this to be the case, I'd be like, well, what do you want me to say? You, you order these raids and you kill American citizens, you get charged. They're not doing that. Mm -hmm. They're not. Because they, why would they you won't yeah. do that because then... Everyone's going to be like, <clears throat> Mr. Obama, right this yep. way, sir, into yep. this vehicle. You know what, though? They're so shameless that they would prosecute Trump for something like that and just not look yep. into Obama or Biden. I mean, that's the whole point and here, then, right? And they, then the, these the, people the, are all criminals. And, and then all the people on Twitter would be like, well, actually, it's justified because in this instance... Yeah, it's yep. also dangerous, though, because when a Republican president will eventually get back into office, we will see attorney generals in different states say, hey, let's go indict a former Democrat. Let's go investigate until we find something. A good prosecutor could indict Iraq. So mm. right. we, don't, Demo we don't know what the indictment is right now. It's definitely a process crime, which is kind of a joke. And years ago, they got Martha Stewart on a process crime. So when you bring enough of a staff in front of the grand jury and somebody forgets one little thing because they can't have the exact memory, oh, the, you're lying. So mm. it's very easy when you have the whole weight of the Justice Department behind you, millions of dollars, they can get you on anything. This mm -hmm. is a real joke. They're not going to get him that he's holding documents because he's ex-president. Then you'd have to go get Biden. You'd have to go get Pence. You'd have to go get Obama. So it's just going to be a silly process crime, but they want to stop Trump from running. And they want to stop him from. Do you guys want to see when a Republican is eventually president again that um, attorney generals from red states go after yes. former Democrat? Absolutely. And former Republicans. Yeah, all former Republicans. Go too. after Bush, yeah. go after but Obama, so go after Biden, that's go after what, all of them. That's not how it would be, though. It'd be hyper partisan. Depends on the Republican, but you're probably right. It, most Republicans wouldn't. But I think somebody like Trump would. Maybe, yeah. Yeah, I think part of what makes this country great and has made it great is that we haven't fallen into petty squabble like that in 250 years. Like we just don't do that because right. we have bigger dish, bigger Sh issues. Short, short, shorten your time span here, buddy. Okay, Eight 160. Years. Yeah, I mean it's been since years. the Civil War, you could say. <laughs> right. Yeah. Okay. But <laughs> well, for the most part, to say petty squabble that was that wasn't yeah, petty. Was yeah, that, that was a big deal. We had to end slavery, and and you know there was it was a big problem. But this is like. Just that he said, she said, he's carrying a box of documents. He's, he, he signed this paperwork. He ordered that kill. He ordered that kill. Like, yo, it's the biggest military in the world. It's the most dangerous machine on earth. And someone's got to point the buttons, point the, point the guns. Um, I, I just, there's so many more bigger problems on earth that we should be focused on than, than arresting past po political opponents. It's so ridiculous, man. It's a dangerous, oh, no, sorry. dangerous I, oh, no, escalation of a tit for tat is what's going to happen. Well, this is what's really shocking. I, I shouldn't say shocking, but something worth pointing out. And it's that there are two segments of the population and they're relatively large demographics. Okay, These are people who are either in category A, willfully ignorant, or in category B, not willfully ignorant, who believe that this is the first time since Nixon that an American president has done something worthy of pursuing with an indictment or charges. Yeah. There are people who are looking at this and they're saying, oh my goodness, all of our presidents have behaved within the law and haven't committed war crimes, haven't betrayed the American people, haven't betrayed their oath of office, and then Donald Trump came along and there are good reasons to indict that man and the best of them is that he had declassified documents that he declassified himself. People are willing to believe this. Well, the remarkable thing is the logic makes no sense. If Trump can't declassify anything at any time, then he's literally not the authority of this country to have conversations pertaining to war. Mm -hmm. How can you be the commander in chief of the armed forces 
And then this is the example I gave last time. It's like you meet with Vladimir Putin and he's like, you know, I, I want you to move these missiles out of this territory. What missiles? Yeah. As well, OK, we know the U.S. has missiles here. You move them. Otherwise, it's war. I'm, I'm sorry. I can't confirm or deny. I don't have the authority. Biden probably does say what missiles, though, to be fair. He's like, what are you talking about, man? <laughs> I don't know what you mean. What? <laughs> is do we have missiles? He gets on the phone. He's like, are there missiles in Ukraine? There are. Is, do you think, oh, man. You think the implication. And then, then he gets off the line. He's like. I don't know if there's missiles there. <laughs> Do you think that the implication is that Donald Trump didn't declassify the documents before he, he took them? There's, there's no process for it. Oh, okay. The president has plenary declassification powers. He can literally just be like, these are no longer classified. So I, I had them on me, therefore they're not classified anymore. He's, he did say they were declassified. But they're like arguing there's some kind of formal process by which the president does not need, needs to get approval from someone else. Mm -hmm. But they're not going after him on this. Apparently, the report is that they're charging him with losing possession of classified documents or something like that, or of, of sensitive national security documents. So they're actually trying to avoid the question uh, of whether or not he classified or declassified by saying it's a totally different law. Now, losing acts, losing control of secured documents is something Hillary Clinton did when she would forward all that stuff to Jake Sullivan, like out of her 30,000 emails or whatever she had, there's there I've. I, you know, I, I should have one that I could pull up right now that was legitimate national security mm -hmm. risk. But she was, as far as I understand, not supposed to be forwarding, you know, Secretary of State documents to this guy, Jake Sullivan. Well, Ian, I think there's a good argument to be made that every single one of the 30,000 emails that Hillary Clinton deleted was a potential national security risk if she were to be elected for one very simple reason. She didn't want people to see those emails. And there was a receiver, which means there were people who would have the leverage over the sitting president of the United States of being able to release these emails that she deleted when she was subpoenaed. So that in and of itself means that someone else could end up pulling the strings or someone else could end up uh, being in a position where the president owes them this favor because they have blackmail. You mean because someone else received documents from mm -hmm. Hillary that she means couldn't... anyone could have them? Well, no, my point is, so Hillary Clinton has these 30,000 emails and then she deletes all of them. Because she clearly doesn't want uh, an investigation to be looking into those emails. She doesn't want the American people to see them. Well, here's the thing. She can only delete those emails on her end. Thanks for watching this clip from the Timcast IRL podcast. Hang out with us live Monday through Friday at 8 p.m. And become a member over at Timcast.com for uncensored members-only shows exclusive. Thanks for hanging out, and we'll see you all next time.